Good morning and happy Wednesday. It is another round of feedback reports and I actually remembered to to wait on my RCF scorecard update so we could do it here together and see what kind of changes we've got. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, you all got the State of the RCF newsletter this morning and I would like to just highlight uh, the first award for RCF Grand Rapids and Tiffany Pierce. Um, again, this is a, award is only eligible to anyone who is uh, positive ACQ. So for uh, a while, it was uh, really just Bay City, Dayton, Las Vegas, Orlando, and Riverside uh, collecting these awards. So Grand Rapids, Tiffany, uh, and team as well. So congratulations on, on that first member of the week uh, award. And now that you are positive, ACQ positive, stay there and you're going to remain eligible every single week here and out. Um, also, there are four tier one members. Um, a tier, basically, it takes your ranks that you can control, or sorry, your metrics that you can control, and then it ranks you against every other member. So, for example, what it does not count against you is the number of opportunities you get, right? But it will count how many estimates you deliver and how many wins, your conversion rate, Cost per acquisition does come into play, but once you start winning a heavy amount, that really doesn't matter as much. Your, your ACQ points have diminishing returns the higher you get. Um, but it takes, the tier takes the average ranking, so right here under average, Dayton averages third place, well, 3.6th place out of 10 across all these metrics. Um, Indianapolis, seventh place, 7.4. And so then it's going to break up all of you into five groups, just five different tiers. And that's tier one, two, three, four, five. And so for this week, get back to that, this week there are, well, I mean, right now there are four tier one members and, and that has never happened before. The tier one members were really just Dayton and Bay City. Las Vegas got the tier one rating. I think it was was today, it was Wednesday, so like last Friday, I think it was. And so Orlando now joins the ranks there as well. That just shows the program is strengthening. It may be very slow, but that's okay. I just know that when you guys, when you hit a level of success in here, you're, you're sticking with it and you're finding success. No, the finder's fee is not cheap, but it's worth it. It wouldn't be worth it. Or it, it Dayton, Las Vegas, and Orlando would not be here if it weren't worth it. Now that day may come where they find um, that it isn't as worth it, but we're going to do everything we can to avoid that. Um, on Oliver's feedback here, I'm going to jump right into this before updating the, the scorecard because we've only got one report. Um, everyone else smashed the all clear, the all good signal. And what I want to highlight here is that um, it seems that we lost another client. And I don't know, you've been naming them. I have, I don't have the names in front of me. So it might be three of them um, that you've signed on that you've now lost. Granted, now I know you've won a, a healthy amount. So losing these three isn't going to turn it upside down, but it still does hurt. And I, I want to point out a couple things here. Well, first is I had a note here. I wanted to ask you before I get into it. Um, you, you mentioned she she lost her job and has canceled all cleans until further notice. Now, I, I don't mean at all to overstep, but if you have not, um, this isn't really a lost one. To I mean, yes, it is. It's lost in that sense. But when she gets a job and gets back on her feet, it's like this could be a lay down, a cakewalk win. Um, so saying, hey, Annette, I, I, like, you know, I'm sorry to hear this. Well, you probably already had that conversation. Try to follow up maybe if it's June right now, four months would be like October-ish, kind of before the holiday season. So that way you can say, you know, hey, I'm checking in to see if um, you're able to get back on your feet and if we can help out at all with the holidays coming up, blah, 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 blah. That'll be the perfect segue into it. And this way we are doing everything we can to make sure they're, they're not falling through the cracks, even at this point. Again, I don't mean to overstep, so I, I'm sure you have something like this in place. If not, I think it would be great, but I do think that you've already had this conversation with her. Um, but for anyone else, if you lose a client, 
the the best thing you can do is first of all ask or try to get feedback why they're canceling so that you know what you can improve on and two get a date and say all right it's, it's like you know it's not working out right now can i follow up with you in six months um, circumstances circumstances and life changes so much in six months and a year's time um, that they very well could even need you again, even more so than they did before. And your simple follow-up could be what triggers them to, to sign back up. So just having that stuff in place where you don't have to remember it on your own by using a task management system, you can offload all that mental energy and just be at peace and know everything is taken care of. All your follow-ups are going to happen. Um, so more about your feedback, Oliver. Uh, 12 visits last week across six staff, somewhat stressed, which I'm assuming is because of Miss Carter here, Mrs. Carter. Um, satisfaction of four, thank you dearly. Four out of five, four out of 10, can you imagine? Four out of five. Um, but then after this challenge of Miss Mrs. Annette Carter, I don't know if it's Mrs., I need to quit doing that. You did sign up and our, a new client from the RCF, Nancy, Mrs. Nancy, because her husband is British, so liked your accent. Chris also liked your accent. He told me after his first, I think it was like right after y'all had your first call, your first phone call back in February. And he mentioned something about how you're going to have an unfair advantage because of your accent and then people are just going to follow fall for it, or like fall over, head over heels every single time they talk to you and just sign right up. So it, it's funny that you say that. And I, I, I mean, I love to hear it being in this role. So, so keep going at it and keep using that to your advantage. But nevertheless, that's, that's great to hear. Not, not that it fully <laughs> remedies the Annette Carter situation, but it definitely does make it easier. Um, I love always your suggestions for improvement. Just keep them coming. Brother, I'm trying to do it every day, day in and day out. I know um, some of the batches of leads that come through uh, might not hit as well. Some of them are, you can win like two and three in a row and sometimes you're gonna lose the next 30. Um, but Oliver, the way that you um, promptly reply to your leads and you follow through, follow up with them so thoroughly, I like, I'm, I'm getting you every single lead that I can in your radius, in your market area, because I know that you are, um, I know that you're taking care of them. And same with Dayton, Orlando, Chris, and, and Reagan, you guys, you as well. Um, you, you, y'all are allowing me to do what I, what I truly love to do. And I, I love being able to feed your businesses in this way. Again, I know the finder's fee isn't incredibly cheap. Um, but Oliver, the, the fact that you're tracking, I mean, even like this, um, your break even costs on this, it like gives me incredible confidence because the more feedback that you give me on this stuff, I put into action, you know, the following week and, and I'm, it's going to be a continuous, uh, flywheel of improvement. So, um, truthfully, uh, every all good, all clear signal is just as good as, as getting a feedback report to me. I, I know that really there's no complaints and we're just chugging along like, I like, love to see that, uh, but I do, I do love these feedback reports and I'm always really grateful uh, for your time, Oliver, especially, thank you. Um, so before, before I've even updated this, this scorecard today, we had Grand Rapids, you, you won member of the week. I think it was, well, let me go see, I'm not gonna guess. So I track all of them like the historical ones. And so it has, you were 35 up to 112, right? So 35 ACQ on June 10th, 112 on like close of business, well, the end of the day on June 16th. But on Monday morning, I think it was Monday morning. No, it was yesterday morning. You added a win, which took you now up to 217. So you've doubled your ACQ even beyond that, and you're primed for another member of the week award. Now, I do know that Chris has been up to something. Chris, 
Chris and Oliver have jumped up a bit, but your your percentage increase is a lot higher where their, their point, points are a lot higher right now. Um, growth wise, excuse me. Um, let me see if this one shows it right here. So like the 35 to 112 was a 77 point increase, but 220% gain. Um, so Las Vegas, for them to go up, you know, 77 points is, why is that even like 10%? I don't even know. I, I'm terrible with percentages without actually calculating it. So it's much smaller of a gain when you're, when you're up higher. Um, so <laughs> Tiffany, you're primed. Uh, for this next week's uh, member of the week. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out. Again, we're only at today's June 19th, so Wednesday. Um, but let's see how Custom Aids has been doing over these last 90 days. 321, March 21st to June 19th. 282, 125, and 86. 125, 86. All right, Chris, let's check out your, your pipeline here. Four Oh nine, one sixty two and thirty six. It was down a touch, but it's going to happen when you start getting you know, when you take that giant leap forward, one day those those estimates and wins are going to fall off and not be counted here. So it's just it's just part of the game um, overall. But if you zoom out, Chris, you have been steadily increasing all the time, and Reagan, you as well, Oliver, you started off at a high point. So it's just going to be interesting to see how that keeps going. Um, you are at 307, Oliver, 137, nice, and 28. 307, 137? I think that's what I was correct. Okay, so you are going up a touch, more than a touch, 40 some points. Well done, just from today. And Orlando, how are we doing? 239, yeah, 239, 75, 22. All stays the same except this. We love to see it. Tiffany, let's see if you, I, I didn't get any notifications of wins yesterday, but perhaps you delivered an estimate. So we're gonna check this out right now. 136 opportunities, 50 and seven. Okay. Soon you're going to have some wins that fall off because you've been with us for 121 days. So you beyond, yeah, four months beyond the 90 days. And you're going to have some of these start falling off. So we've got to maintain the pace base, basically. Uh, so them falling off doesn't mean you lost anything. It just means that they were outside the 90 day view outside that 90 day window. Um, so let's check Chicago 3, 92, 9, and 3. All right, so we're going to go down there just because we've increased the number of opportunities there. Let's check Riverside. Um, and Tiara, we are going to be releasing more leads into your account once you have that call with Chris, the sales mentor. He's also with Dayton, RCF Dayton. So you're in incredible hands there, learning, getting the lay of the land and figuring out how to get more estimates delivered and more of these, uh, more of these wins. So we're gonna have more leads into your account. There's a ton of them in your area. Uh, once I get confirmation basically that that uh, you've spoken with him because I don't want to, you know, keep I don't want to overwhelm with leads and have them just fall through the cracks and not be uh, properly taken care of. All right, Riverside, we are at 80, 80, 31, and 4. And we've gone negative. And 
that one. Daniel, um, still at risk due to the overdue ACQ tax invoice because went by, we closed out last month with a negative ACQ score. Even though you got it positive in like, I think it was June 3rd or 4th, you added two of the one-time clean wins in your pipeline right after getting that notice, you still let the month close out as a negative ACQ. And because you were at good standing, you were only taxed at a 50 cent, 50 cent per negative point rate. But now your, your standing is at risk because we've let that overdue or that invoice go overdue. And now we've gone negative because we lost about 12 estimates here. The pipeline is starting to dwindle because uh, we're not loving what we're seeing inside the CRM or, um, you know, billing issues and stuff like that. So we need a massive turnaround here. Otherwise, I, our CF002 class is no longer going to be with us. Um, Indianapolis, Michael. You've been on a roll. It's just a matter of getting these wins across the finish line here. All right, 155, 39 and five. I keep delivering like one estimate a day. I can tell you're, you're almost positive there. Um, what I notice here, if I take the average of everyone from estimates to one ratio, they're at 27%. You're at about a 15, so you're a little bit lower there. And if I look at the estimates, like from ops to estimates, geez, it's 27 for both, 27, 28. You're very close on this end. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. What I would do from this, and now you can totally correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not really looking inside your pipeline as of today. Go through these estimates, comb through them and get a reply, a definitive reply. like go through it with the mentality that you're trying to get them to say no, because a portion of them will say yes. And if you get, let's say two wins here, you're at 200 ACQ, right? Um, so I, I don't know, I got, I should go back inside your pipeline and just double check that later and see if you have any that are open or if you've already gone through them and they're lost and declined for a previous reason. It's a matter of like, okay, we got to get you some more leads because you're, you're delivering these estimates and they're declining you to price. And really that's not a terrible thing um, because that shows that you're charging a little bit of a premium price. But if we're not following up with them after giving them the estimate, that's on us. Um, or if they just didn't like our vibe we were getting out, you know, that's also on us. Um, so we've got to figure it out one way or another there, but this is where I would start is looking at those that you've gotten a quote to and just going through them and just ensure, like, just make them say no, basically get them to say no. And some of them are going to say, you know what? Yes, I put me on your schedule. It's just going to happen. When we see that you're going to have far more leads coming in here. We're getting, um, it's not limited. We're just not going full throttle yet because we're still in the beginning stages your CRM hygiene, you, you manage it properly in the sense of getting to uh, your new leads, responding to them quickly, um, but you do have a healthy sized pipeline, which is good. So that leads me to, to believe that um, you have some people that you've quoted that you can go through and just comb, comb through and get an answer from. Um, all right, LAX and Grenada, just started well they're launching today but i know grenada got a lead yesterday so i wonder if i do here you need to go up one out i think you still need to be 0 0.5 because she needs to she hasn't done her clearing to launch checklist um and grenada is starting out at risk um because we loved everything that we saw coming through RCF University on the PAS exam, on the other exams that are required in RCF University. Um, what, what caused a bit of a hang up was on the application. So we require that you have an office person or an admin person, um, or that it's you, that you're not cleaning. If you are cleaning in the field or you don't have 
an office person, you start out at risk because you have an insufficient application score or your market area, for example, is too small. Like Grenada, Mississippi is much, much smaller than Las Vegas, Nevada, for example. So the Las Vegas application had a, it was much easier to pass because of the market area. Um, however, this is a very, very unique um, situation. Oops, I'm gonna switch these around now. Uh, because your PAS exam, we loved what we were hearing. You sound like you have the it factor that we're truly looking for. And at the end of the day, we wanna have members peppered across the country. And I don't know how many other uh, cleaning companies are gonna come from Grenada, Mississippi or serve that area or Tupelo. Uh, so it felt right to, to give this one a shot, but to make sure that the program stays a little bit more protected, we are going to start this one off at risk. So you've gotten your notices already, Erica, so just ignore those. Um, you're not at risk for anything, any billing issues or any uh, performance issues. So we're starting today, June 19th. You, I think, got your first lead last night. So go into Nurturely Plus, call them, text them, set up that estimate, get that quote delivered, and we're going to get some more to you. Um, and when if you see that Darcy Finder lead in there, that is a test lead that comes through. And when you go through that clearing to launch checklist, it shows you exactly how to uh, process that one. So it gives you an opportunity to go through and see how it looks like from beginning to end, but just doing it with a test lead. But once you do that, we will come in and give you a win as you're starting off. So basically everyone starts off with their, with a free win to start off at, from a higher starting point. And now I can see that this tier one ranking was taken away because of, of this here. And I don't love that. So what I'm going to do is switch it back. Oh, I wonder why right? the Orlando one is still two. Um, that is interesting. That just happened today. So it's, I can see your averages are 4.3. So I think it needs to be like around four or 4.1. Um, so let's, let me see this. Oh, it took it down. Okay. I'm not going to really play around with that one too much. I could spend like hours doing that. Um, so what I usually do here first, bear with me. I got to, what I usually do is track the program averages and just see how everything as a whole is shaking out. But when I add a new member, it does, uh, it, it takes a nosedive. Um, so like, for example, everything dropped here 20% on June 13th, um, but that's when we added LAX and, and Grenada to the scorecard. Um, but on this, I can see that the average ACQ for everyone has been increasing for the last six days. Absolutely love to see that. Um, it shows me from a broad view that everyone is improving or that someone is doing really well. Um, again, I anticipate having a, a couple hundred members in here someday uh, once we cover the entire country. So I need a much better view to zoom out and see like, you know, how's everything going and then identify bottlenecks. So it seems quite silly right now and it is sometimes, but this is all built, you know, for three and five years down the road. Um, and even at one point I had like 20 members in here. So I needed it at that point to really dive in. But since then, it's thinned out to the best core group that we have ever had here. So it's honestly thrilling. Finally, what I do with the uh, scorecard update is track everyone's daily streaks. This only started June 1st, though. So what I have been doing is taking your ACQ score today and comparing it against yesterday. That's it. Indianapolis, you've increased the most, um, but you don't get a streak if you are negative. In this case, you gotta be positive. So you have previously gained, you were up as high as a two, um, a two day streak of growth when you were hovering above zero, but without any estimates delivered or wins, your ACQ kind of just like, it trails down a little bit every single day. Um, but here, Grand Rapids, we've got, a streak here pushing your max to two 
You do not get a streak if you're at risk. Oliver, Bay City, Orlando, Dayton loses their streak. Chicago did not have one. Riverside does not have one as well. Actually down quite a bit because we lost a bunch of estimates. Um, so this means absolutely nothing. I like to see this and get a decent idea who's going to be our member of the week. Um, I thought it was going to be Las Vegas last week, but it was Grand Rapids and it was that was absolutely like thrilling to, to find out and especially get that first win. Um, also on this scorecard, last thing I'm going to talk about before wrapping it up, because it's almost 25 minutes, CRM audits. These only happen on your ACQ evaluation dates or if you end up in the bottom three of the week. So if you're in the bottom three of the week, we will go through and evaluate your sales pipeline and do an audit of your CRM and make sure that everything is going all right and find out what we can do to improve, basically. Um, Mount Airy wasn't on this last one. LAX and Grenada were not either because they had just started. So it was, I think it was, it was Grand Rapids, Chicago, three and Indianapolis. Um, you need a 60% or higher to pass your CRM audit. So a D minus is all we need here. Do not worry about this. You just need to see pass here. I know that some of you are going to want this to be 100. But if you look at the audit date here, you can see how long it's been since we've done it. So this isn't necessarily real time. Um, I would have just used this. Grand Rapids, Chicago, and Indianapolis two days ago got the most recent CRM audit. Indianapolis passed 84%. Wonderful. Chicago, 0%. Grand Rapids, 0%. Grand Rapids, you failed the, the audit because of how many overdue tasks are in there. If you had zero, you, you'd pass with flying colors. Now, let me be clear. The CRM audit does not, it does not yet affect, it does not affect the ACQ. Um, this is just to help us see who's managing the, the, the CRMs properly and help us see it quickly. If you're not managing the CRM properly, it is really difficult to have a good ACQ score. So if you have a positive ACQ score, we're, we're looking at your CRM four times a year is all. If you are not having, if you are not enjoying a good ACQ score, where we're gonna be in there probably every week and you're gonna see this over and over and over again. And you're go, it, it gets published, the reports are published so that you can see what we think that you can do um, a little bit better. And those links are all in the state of the RCF as of the last two or three weeks, you will see the current report as well as the historical reports. All of that comes out every Wednesday. TTLs are going to be included, are going to be factored in on the ACQ score beginning July 1st, beginning of quarter three. This has been in the state of the RCF for the last I know, probably five or six volumes, uh, but I need to be very clear that this is going to start influencing your ACQ scores. Um, if you're between 250 minutes and 500 minutes, nothing changes. So um, nothing changes for these top four here. Chicago and Indianapolis, you're, you're less than 250, so you'll actually get a 5% um, increase. Indianapolis, not yet, because you have to be positive for this to happen. If you're negative, if you're more than 2,000 minutes negative, your positive ACQ will be slashed by 80%, but your negative will just remain negative. It doesn't affect, it doesn't influence negative scores. But once you go positive, if this 2000 remains, it slashes your ACQ score by 80%. This all takes effect July 1st. Um, right now, if I showed you what it did, I don't know how much it's gonna change everyone's, but it will, not very much. 
I think it was, Grand Rapids would go up by three points. Nope. Chicago goes up by three points. Grand Rapids goes down by about 30. 50. Um, because the TTL is still 776. So we got to aim for 500 minutes or better. The good news with this one, Tiffany, is this, your TTL has been dropping very, very sharply, very quickly. So it only looks back at your most recent 90 days. So in the beginning, you had some quite large, quite high TTLs, but those are no longer being counted. Your most recent activity is starting to be counted. So if you just keep doing what you're doing, delivering your estimates, promptly replying to your leads, getting estimates scheduled, or just getting them their quotes, this is going to continue to go down and you're going to be one of the tops. Uh, you're going to rank in one of the tops of the TTLs, which I also do have here on the official scorecard, uh, ranking the top TTLs um, overall. So this is all publicly available on the official RCF scorecard sheet um, under the TTLs tab. We've got our ranks, category awards, member of the week, all that good stuff. So um, it's been another great week. This one was another longer uh, feedback report. I had a few more things to go over, uh, a few more things to dish about. I'm really grateful that y'all allow me to do this. And, and for those of you that actually stick along um, and, and watch, watch these videos, uh, they'll get better, they'll improve, and I'll eventually have uh, more visuals up here to, to help go along with the conversations that I'm having. I'm just absolutely miserable with video editing. Uh, so I need all the help I can get. That being said, have a great Wednesday, a great rest of your week. Happy Juneteenth, by the way. Uh, make it a good one. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.